morning. Isn't it such a lovely day? Ah, the sun is so bright. I basically just wanted to come on here and talk a little bit about self-image and self-worth. And I have been really thinking about this topic over the last couple of weeks, especially since on my other channel I talked about how I opened up some of my old art books and it kind of changed my perception of like everything I thought about myself, everything I thought about my art, and it really got me thinking about like who I am as a person and why it is that certain things make me react the way I do. So redefining some of the things that I've been specifically talking about on the other channel, which is the idea of aesthetics and the idea of beauty. Like, how do I define aesthetics? How do I define beauty? And when I was growing up, I used to read a lot of books. And because I used to read a lot of books, um, I used to base my idea of what a person was, what a girl was, what a boy was, on what these stories would tell me, how they would describe the different situations and so on and so forth. And I think for me, what defined being a woman, being beautiful, was Pride and Prejudice's Elizabeth. Now, I really enjoyed the book a lot. However, the book really enforced the idea that to be beauty, to be beautiful, you have to be um, Jane, you know, Jane Bennett. And I really felt that I wanted to steer clear of Jane Bennett as much as possible because her and the partner that she falls for are not the kind of people that I ever wanted to be. I, I felt that the book really made me feel as if their love was so pure and so innocent and so perfect and as a flawed human being i could never hope or dream to be in that kind of relationship with that kind of person and so the character that i latched on the most was obviously elizabeth it really stayed in my mind in my conscience for the longest time that uh as a woman who is not perfect is not innocent is not beautiful in the eyes of all in the eyes of all society this is how you know we are regarded or this is how i am regarded and growing up i was told many a times that you know i'm beautiful but i was told that by my, my by people who are obviously biased by my friends and my family members and i just felt that perhaps uh, this is just whenever they tell me things, I am simply fishing for compliments and it is not really the reality that outside of my friends and my family, um, I would not be getting the same um, reaction, you know? And so recently I was laughing and joking with my older sister and I was talking about how um, my older sister was complimenting one of my friends and their work and I was like, but what's about to me, you know? Why don't you talk about my work? Because obviously, <laughs> any little sister who greatly admires her older sister would do. I was just, just mewing about the place and expecting compliments to fly from the ceiling. And it just dawned on me that perhaps, in a way, me declaring how much I don't like myself or how I perceive myself in a negative light it's not really doing anything good. In fact, it probably would come across as me just fishing for compliments. Especially when I watch this video, um, I'll put a little screenshot of it here, uh, where she goes on about on the internet how uh, people often say things like they're ugly and so on and it gets perceived as um, they're fishing for compliments. Now, yes if you look at it that way it doesn't it definitely does seem a little bit like that i realized that i think as much as i'm sure these girls really do feel on some level that they're ugly um perhaps what the internet says could be the case you know maybe they just say and do these things just for the sake of attention um so i i thought okay to sort of make sense of why I 
I, I regard myself the way I do, or I say the things that I do. I wanted to look at my perception of what beauty is. How do I define beauty? Not based on what anyone else says, but be, what based on I say. And that's where I realized my definition of beauty really stems on Elizabeth. Elizabeth Bennett and her perception of herself, her perception of her own mannerism, her perception of her own existence. And I actually think that's very beautiful. And I really admire women and men who behave and who carry themselves the way she does because I really feel that she has a, a very good sense of herself and it's beyond the aesthetics of things, it's beyond just the the way she carries herself, I mean, the way she dresses or the way her facial features look. And I've often said that I don't particularly find myself attractive. Um, I find my girlfriend attractive and I find many other people attractive. And so I also decided to look into the idea of what is aesthetics. How do, how do people intellectually define the word aesthetics and how does that relate to how I define myself and not just myself but my concept of beauty because perhaps if I can if I can pinpoint exactly what it is that I find n not conventionally beautiful when I look at myself in the mirror perhaps I can either change parts of myself to make it more beautiful or I can e reevaluate the relevance of whether beauty is a necessity in my life whether attaining my own perception of um, prettiness or loveliness is necessary at all. I often find that um, I just have different times of my life, so times of, uh, or, uh, or amounts of energy, bouts of energy, where I can do what I'm doing right now, where I can put in the effort to curl my hair and uh, put on makeup and care about the appearance of myself, of, the, of my being. And then there's days when I don't have the energy and I'm sure there's many other people, I'm sure every single person goes through that. So that's why I, how do I say this? That's why I feel that I think it's important to really look at like, like the good times, the times like now where everything's bright and sunny and I'm not feeling um, awful about my body and my my face, to really look at everything and be like, okay, so is it is it really that I hate myself? Is it really that I hate the person who I am? Or is it that I feel like I'm not living up to my own expectations? Is it that I feel that I have something I need to change? And so I, I did all that. I, I looked into all the different things about myself and I, and I realized, ah, the biggest issue I really have with myself is that um, I really feel that I'm not living up to my own expectations. And, and I, I feel that um, my expectations of myself is to be educated to constantly strive to learn more and to do more and that's why I feel to my life I existed because I wanted to share all the interesting information I learned on the internet and add that to my bank of knowledge whether it's useful information or not to educate myself and to become more creative and I found that people when I started talking to them interacting with them they would say things to me that would challenge, so to speak, my idea of what I find beautiful about myself by focusing on my looks and my appearance. And that, I find, is like a distraction because um, I feel very strongly about this quote about, you know, being a rational creature. I just see myself as a human being with functioning features and um, I think that's okay and I feel that by redefining my idea of beauty outside of just um, the, the concept of loveliness or sexiness or uh, kind, 
you know what I mean? Um, and actually look at it as sustainability, efficiency, the beauty of things running smoothly. I redefine um, how I consume things and how I repurpose things that I buy and that I use in the future. And so around the house, I started actually taking the initiative to take old clothes and old material that I've had lying around and actually put it into good use. So um, I'm, I can't remember all the things that I actually have taken videos of, but I think there's about two things so far that I've done. I have actually created this box where I am keeping all of the things that I've collected. Behind here, ta-da! So it's quite full. Um, I keep all the trash that I'm going to uh, laminate. And speaking of which, let me tell you a little bit about what I mean. So yeah, this is the result. It's really nice. Um, I also keep my sewing kits in here. And um, I have all these envelopes right at the back. Which, oops, which store all the finished. They're actually um, envelopes that I often receive every year during Chinese New Year to keep its files, to keep money. But I decided to repurpose them. And so inside I have like laminated bits and pieces for scrapbooking as well as just cutouts like this. Yeah. So I now have this place organized and that brings me so much joy. <laughs> I'm so happy with this. Put this away. And oh yeah, I got little dividers as well. Old hardboard are covered in cloth and they're movable so they're like this you just slip it back in it helps to divide the space up a bit so for example um i ate i bought this to eat and i ate it and i'm keeping the packet because what i want to do is i want to actually cut out uh some of the branding and some of these interesting decor and I want to laminate it now. Uh, Bud has labeled my my scrap. Uh, well, my 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 new my new hobby as laminating trash, and I am now consider a trash collector in this house. But like, really, a lot of um, effort is gone into making these packagings aesthetically pleasing, and I consider this beauty. I think. The people who sat for ages to de you know to design this are really amazing and yes this is trash this is literally trash I can throw this in the trash but I decided you know what I'm obviously going to be doing some scrapbooking about food in the future that's all I I care about sometimes sometimes I don't care about it at all but sometimes that's all I'm obsessed over so having interesting designs like this which I would otherwise just throw away is is cool and it's not like i'm ever gonna sell any of the scrapbooking stuff that i make it's really for myself just to beautify my house and to give myself some perspective of my life and and memories of eating this and consuming this every morning and so i basically wash it and this place is very bright as you can see so i dry it out here in the laundry balcony area and when everything's nicely dried out oh yeah i also kept the coke I will cut out the label. This one needs to be washed. I'll cut out the label, I'll dry it, and then I will laminate it. So these are ways that I have been basically gathering a couple of things here and there just to make sure that um, I can do scrapbooking but in a way that doesn't keep consuming more and more content from like bookstores and whatever. Um, and actually making it personalized because I literally eat that brand of uh, spaghetti. What is this spaghetti? Uh, what's it called? Is it called Veggeroni? <laughs> Spirals. <laughs> well, anyway, I eat this brand of pasta, and I drink this. I drink this Coke. So this is all authentic stuff. And so I created this box to keep them all because they're all loose packages and whatever. And um, I'm doing the same thing when it comes to like packaging for toys, like the Happy Meal toys. In fact, just give me a moment. Let me just grab some of the things I've already laminated. Okay, so here's a bunch of stuff I've already laminated. You can see I've got Skittles, 
the Kinder Joy packaging. All of this stuff I wash first. Um, you got the Happy Meal packaging as well. Um, there's a lot. There's absolutely a lot. This one is even unique. Do you see that? I actually took the packaging that I got from Becky Cass. She wrapped her washi tape in this beautiful uh, soft paper and I cut them out and I make clouds. I don't know if you can kind of see but they're like transparent clouds. So I'm really trying to just recycle and upcycle things so that I can use it. I really like these little um, banana milk cartons so I just cut them out. Things like that. And um, I like this chocolate, this Japanese chocolate which is shaped like a mushroom. Do you kind of see it there? Anyway, yeah. Uh, yeah, so I've got a lot, a lot, and I, I have yet to cut any of this stuff out. My favorite so far is actually the little ramen. I took this from a ramen packet, and um, yeah, I really just intend to use this kind of stuff for my own scrapbooking, for letters, for um, notes and things like that, just to help me um, sort of redefine what it means to do scrapbooking and use materials that I just have around the house. I often used to say, oh, I'm really poor and therefore I can't enjoy some of the luxuries of life, like buying a whole scrapbooking vintage paper haul from AliExpress. And then I started changing that. I started saying, no, I need to save up if I really want that, you know, sticker or I really want that whatever just I need to just save up and so I did and I bought some of the stuff I've even shown you some of the stuff in the videos and it just made me think but this stuff is not stuff that's like familiar to me it's not stuff that I can say oh yeah I have consumed that I have used that before and so by combining a lot of old materials that I already had around the house like the lamination paper years ago I bought like a hundred pieces and I haven't used it yet so <laughs> ta -da. and um, just hours and hours of painstakingly washing and cutting and cleaning all this trash um, I feel like I'm getting closer to my goal of really experiencing my perception of what beauty is a lot of media that I consumed when I was a kid that kind of defined femininity, sexuality, really gave me the impression that to be the kind of woman that I admire, to be the kind of woman that I want to be, strong, independent, brave, you must embrace ugliness. You must embrace um, the lack of conventional beauty because if not, you will be perceived in a way that would sort of, you know, conform you to this small box and that I feel is also a bit of a toxic idea of what beauty is and that's why I really wanted to look at it again and redefine it and really reconsider what exactly do I think beauty is currently right now you know I just because of the way I just grew up I, I define pretty beyond the visual it's got to be beyond that inside here it's got to be up here this has to be pretty you know what i mean and that's when i realized oh i need to go back i need to go way back into like what i defined as oh yeah by the way look at this Ta -da! yes so um <laughs> i need to go back into what i defined as beauty when i was growing up and i realized growing up Is it, yeah, this is it. Growing up, I also saw the way my mom and my dad carried themselves. Now, my mom and my dad are like 50s and 60s babies. So my dad is like a proper gentleman and my mom is like a proper lady. And um, obviously that's why I would read books that are like uh, Charles Dickens and Jane Austen and blah, blah, blah. Because obviously they intended for me to have a good education and they intended for me to be uh, well-read. And those are not just the only books that, um, the only authors that I read. I read a wide selection of different authors. And I've, I feel that the ones that really stuck to me were the ones that had this kind of idea 
of what society should be and how society should present itself because most of the other books that I read were all just fantasy and they're all like Harry Potter and Artemis Fowl and like running off into the sunset and exploring your dreams so they never really broached the subject of like while you're exploring your dreams what are you supposed to look like so obviously the ones that actually talked about that are the ones that stayed and I think for me I think what's beautiful about looking at somebody and loving them not for how they look like but for how they think and feel about life is I feel that everyone changes but there's a person inside that change and that is a constant and it's beautiful to see how they grow and how they evolve because you fall in love with their soul outside of all the things that they decorate themselves with, outside of all the changes everywhere else, that is the constant, the soul. And to see the growth of the soul is amazing. And I feel that, I hope that I will grow into myself. That is my version of self-love. I want to grow into myself, to myself, however I want to express it, however I want to be, however I want to perceive it. And I hope I can learn how to define that clearly in a way that is positive and not feel that I have to live up to some kind of expectation of being a beautiful sexy sexual woman or whatever and in fact I don't know if you noticed but I branded this channel as a non-binary person and honestly these days I just feel like I want to be really, really, really honest, and I just feel that inside my soul, I am genderless, right? I, I have no gender. And it kind of comes hand in hand with also my perception of aesthetics and beauty, because I feel like what is really, truly beautiful, oh my god, I'm doing this with one hand, hold on. Yeah. So. Okay. Ah, finally got it. What is really truly beautiful about people is how beautiful their their freaking souls are, you know? I I love everything about them. Everything about the way people think, the way people feel, the way people evolve. And that's when I realized that I don't see myself as having a gender. I don't see myself as having like a defining sexuality on the inside but I can 100% appreciate that I'm a woman I can appreciate that I have a, fe a female body and I don't really want to change that either but um, my soul which is genderless and fluid and ever-changing inside just is happy to just be and not have to define itself as a man or a woman because of all the sensibilities and all the protocol that you're supposed to have in one way or shape or form, I kind of feel that, or I've kind of known that I've always been like this. I've always just defined, you know, sexuality or, or my gender as being, you know, it's just, it's not important. And so that's why I'm happy to just say I'm a non-binary and, and own it because it really isn't that important. Like being male, being female, it's not important. What's important is how you live your life, how you, how you are, how you are as a human being, how you are as an existence. And to present more masculine, there have been times in my life that I have tried. I have defined it and then obviously I've not done a very good job because I'm not very good at being masculine or I don't have enough masculine hormones at the moment or whatever but like for the most part I just want to be a presenting female and and I'm cool with that and I have the breasts and the vagina to match so I'm good with that <laughs> and lastly I feel that um growing up in a house where I have grown up with very conventionally attractive parents and conventionally attractive people who would constantly highlight arbitrary things about themselves and their appearance to define their own perception of beauty. 
It really made me very introspective at an early age. I constantly questioned myself and questioned the way that I perceive myself. And I, and I guess at some point I just realized if I stopped comparing myself to my face and to the faces of others, perhaps I would be able to redefine what I consider self-worth. And I can strive for a future where I'm no longer crying, or like I, I, I am not the girl who's crying over the fact that I don't look like a certain way. Because like I remember my family would always tease me about this one incident I had when I was really little. There was this beautiful little girl Perfect. She looked like an absolute doll. She had red hair and green eyes and I was so obsessed over her. I thought she was the most magical thing in the universe. And I was crying. I went home crying one day and I was like, Mommy, Daddy, how come I don't look exactly like her? And they were like, that's because you were born from us. You look like us and you'll never look like her. And it really made me feel so lost and I felt like, wow, well, if I could never be like her, then I could never possibly be beauty. So I really started to redefine my perception of beauty. And I realized that my parents are very attractive people. Clearly, you could see from their old photos, which I'm not going to share with you, I'm gonna talk about milfs and dos in the comment section, that those are my parents. You don't get to do that on my channel. No, thank you. Thank you very much. And so with people constantly complimenting members of my family and saying all sorts of things about them, I found it was very different with the way my parents handled beauty. My parents never focused or complimented the physical attributes of any of us kids. They would say beauty when in regards to our grades, when in regards to the way we handle ourselves, the way we dress, the way um, we take care of our room, the way we take care of even our finances. And so growing up, that was very heavily drilled into me, especially from my dad. Um, music was a thing of beauty, you know. Um, ironing your clothes and getting up to, uh, on time for school was a thing of beauty. And so I, I really have my, fa my, my parents to thank for why I feel that I have a completely different concept of beauty and I think I'm grateful because um, I've never really wanted or felt the need to do anything to myself. Like I, I'm totally okay with people who have plastic surgery but I just don't need to because thankfully the outside of my body has never been a thing for me to, to pick at and to change. And, it's only recently when I started realizing I say a lot of um, self-hate speech to myself or mean stuff to myself. That's when I started to think, is it that? Is it now that time? Have I now suddenly developed and grown into this person who actually starts to need to like fix something? And I realized, no, it's up here. My brain is unhappy with itself yet again. And I'm saying all this kind of stuff yet again because... I am restless. I'm restless. I'm thirsty for more knowledge, more skills. I need to continuously fill up my cup with more interesting and exciting things to learn. And I, at the moment, based on the state of my mind, no longer consider myself a thing of beauty because I'm just bored and restless. Even despite the fact that I have so many things planned and so many things to do, I realized that I am missing the one thing that used to excite me and used to make things so fun, and that is research. I'm missing the hours I used to spend going to the library. I haven't gone to the library in years. It has been the twilight zone for all of us, and it's just starting to get under my skin how much I've missed the library. And no, don't, don't get me wrong. I have gone online. I have subscribed to Scribe. I've subscribed to uh, Audible. I've gotten the books, and I've even subscribed to like the membership for the library. I've done all of that, but it just hits different when you go to a library. It hits different when you go to a museum. And so I feel that I need to start doing that again. Thankfully, things are opening up again. And so 
oh, the minute I can go to a library again, I am going to go to a library again. I want to sit amongst the books and I want to run my hands along the spines. I want to smell the deep moldy smell of ancient text and in the reference section and I just want to sit on the carpeted floor which I'm not supposed to sit on and just hide away for a couple of moments before the librarian asks me to quietly move to a nearby seating location because you're not supposed to sit on the floor but hell do I want to I miss that I feel like without being in the presence of many, many authors and writers, I feel like I have gone slightly damp behind the ears. That is not even an expression that exists anywhere. <laughs> Wet behind the ears. I've come just, I've, I'm, I'm, I'm a, a subpar version of myself. I didn't realize that not just the the books alone but the whole experience of being in the library and and after that going to a little quaint cafe with my girlfriend where we chit chat and we talk and we just think about life and the future and all those beautiful things when we romanticize everything and all of that that is what oh, that is what defines me and what i consider beauty those feelings oh, i'm already just ah oh, just weak at the knees that's beautiful <gasps> moving forward i basically want to try to remind myself about beauty remind myself about what i what i deem as aesthetics and aesthetically pleasing and that's why i went online and i actually tried to find some information to really define and hone what aesthetics really mean. So I'm going to put on the screen a little extract of an article that I found online that really sums it up for me. And I really feel that the perception of the senses is very subjective because we all use our senses differently. And we all put different emphasis on different senses in our life. And because I define the the idea of of hearing of listening more than I do seeing sometimes you know I feel that like this is why I love music and I love um, audible stuff and that's why I get so easily triggered by loud noises and and, and noisy areas and crowds and things like that um, that is where a lot of emphasis of beauty is for me and so visually, I feel the visual is always an enhancement. And it's necessary. I need visuals. I need visuals. I eat up visuals all the time. That's why I do still try to put on effort in light. Because a lot of times people have always complained that I don't have any eyebrows because my this the my my hair on my on my forehead is so fine that it looks like I have no eyebrows. That's why I actually draw I draw in my eyebrows. And then as for my eyes, um, I'm always super um, awkward. The fact that like if I if I don't have eyeliner or some kind of shading, you literally can't see my eyes. Like they just get swallowed in because my glasses are so huge. So that's why I actually put on the effort to actually do makeup because on video camera you you can just compare with the other videos where I don't have any makeup. It's like my 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 facial features just cease to exist. So yeah, I I just kind of feel that it's important to be aware of like aesthetics and be aware of what senses you're using to define your aesthetics and I think that can really enhance my life by educating myself and so another thing that the article says is that um, the science of sensory knowledge directed towards beauty so um, sensory knowledge you know you're talking about your eyes your ears your mouth your nose and all these parts and so that's why beauty can be defined in many ways by many things even disgusting awful things can be beautiful and that's why I think the eeriness of liminal spaces and the eeriness of all these amazing weird core and mushroom core and goblin core art have their own version their own type of unique beauty and that's why I love it so much because it's beauty beyond just appeal it's uh, disgust it's longing it's uh, repulsion it's 
fear, all of those bring about a different sense of beauty based on the strength or the weakness of its effects on the senses and on the mind. And I think all that stuff is really gorgeous. Like, this is beautiful. I put the matcha green tea. It's basically like a super green, uh, green tea flavored uh, oat cereal drink. I have them here nicely tucked away next to my ginger. And then um, I used two packets of no sugar, no sugar added um, coffee because I want to wake up. And then I put a tiny teaspoon of sugar because, let's face it, I need it to be a little bit sweet. It can't be like completely not sweet. And I, I like doing this because some days I don't even put any sugar at all. So I know someone in the comments is going to be like, added sugar after everything you own is non-sugar. I'm sorry, it's just a tiny bit, okay? It's just a teeny bit. It's just, look at how small my spoon is. <laughs> oh my god. It's so good. This is a thing of beauty. I like to think about it because it plays a huge part in me as an artist and I want the work that I create to reflect who I am and talk about my journey as a human being on this planet and so aesthetics in a in many ways is everything when it comes to art it's everything when it comes to like the choices we make like I chose this mint green because I'm in love with just mint green and with plants and the coolness of the color that it brings and everything I put inside this mug just makes me so happy. And then I have a little a little lime green um, plastic spoon here in complete contrast to that, which I feel adds a pop of color. So being able to look at all of these different things all around me and see a certain type of beauty in them. When I go and put pen to paper or brush to canvas, I take that with me, I take the stories of all these things around me with me. And that is how I define beauty. Beauty is everywhere. It's in the colors, it's in the shapes, it's in the sounds, like the car going past down the road, it's in the smells, ah, coffee mixed with matcha and oatmeal drink. It's in the feeling of love and warmth being in this house with my girlfriend this feeling of safety and home and continuity and so yeah that's how I define beauty and I think right now in this space and time I am very beautiful because I'm surrounded by so much love so much beauty so much passion for life and so much knowledge and the inquisitive mind to keep learning more I can finally say out loud that I do not hate myself anymore. I used to. I really did. But now, finally, I don't. And I'm so happy. <sighs> Come, let me show you the things I've made. Okay, so I've been really on a journey trying to find and to define my idea of like self-worth and beauty and whatever and so um, I really wanted to try to create an environment physically for myself that I'm proud to live in and um, this video is basically sharing um, some of the stuff that I've done to do just that. So one of the things that I did recently I think, oops, I cried about recently was I dropped my glasses so my glasses are actually here now I actually attempted to fix them because I was like okay you know what I can't keep editing videos and you know not being able to see properly so what I did was I glued the glass together and yeah I was really proud of it however sadly it didn't stick it kept on falling apart so as you can see I bought the ex same exact pair of glasses again. The person who sold me the first one thankfully had two left in stock. So this is quite different. You can see at the side that, yeah, it's red. <laughs> um, 
but the front is the same so if you just see me from the front the glasses look exactly the same um the other ones but this one is actually black um why didn't i just try to fix it again because the part that broke is the hinge the hinge is no longer even connected uh, this part and I use glue to oh sorry it's this side I use glue to stick it back together but it just keeps falling apart let me just show you if you open it you can see how that is just not working out it's it's so bad you know this one is proper you see how it's supposed to look and you see how <laughs> well anyway I tried and I feel like I, I feel empowered that I tried because for a couple of days it really was quite effective and I was really quite happy with the results um, but of course I'm so happy that Bud managed to help me hunt down the person who sold us this one and the person who sold it they sent the replace well not replacement they sent the new spec uh, spectacle frame the day of after we paid for it so it was so fast as well and the person was so easy to communicate with so thank you so much i also take any plastic anywhere that i get from plastic packaging to just cut and make little sleeves those are also my diy sleeves to keep extra bits and pieces and um for the ones that i have recently scrapbooked i got this from juice cartons and so on honey stars uh these ones i haven't actually defined where exactly i want to put them so they're all in this tray which i also scrapbook from well not scrapbook i, I salvage from these bread rolls i have two such trays so i'm just gonna keep doing that recycling and repurposing then this I think you're going to be quite familiar with. I actually painted the mushrooms on it. Um, I covered it with some old um, smooth cloth. Uh, so it's like the backdrop for a lot of the videos that I use. Plus the lid for my little scrapbooking nook here. So yeah. Um, quite happy with that and then lastly there is the skirting for underneath the uh, the sink it's been quite a while since Brad and I discussed what we want to do with this area and finally I decided to just you know take matters into my own hands and created the curtains because Bud really wanted to buy curtains for me and I was like no I'd really love it if I could just you know repurpose some of the material we have and I did it's not the best sewing obviously it's my my hand sewing because I don't have a sewing machine and um, I'm, I'm still trying to learn at the same time I'm also trying to build my art uh, collections and so on so I use whatever skills that I have and I think it's it, it works it's durable everything's I even use my own badges as the buttons to hold the loops in place so really repurposing everything and being able to enjoy some of my art while I'm at it yeah so thank you so much for watching this video this is how I am treating myself taking care of myself showing myself a little bit of self-love around me in my environment uh, and it makes me happy every single time I see something that I've done and that is efficient in the space that I'm living in I'm like okay I did something good this is an uh, this is a home improvement a life improvement I did good yeah okay so that's it do let me know in the comment section below what you do around your house to show yourself a little bit of self-love and as always may your days be magical I will see you in the next time Mwah. bye bye